All right, so by the end of this lecture, all right, so if you ever see this, all right, swabots, all right, boom, it means students will be able to. Sorry, I don't know what that S was for. Stuff, right? Uh, first thing is we'll be able to implement both sides of a many to many relationship. We're going to practice keeping groups of data related to classes on the class as a class variable. This will make more sense. All these things will make more sense by the end of the lecture, and I want to review them and go back to them and touch them again to see if they do, in fact, do that. We're going to go deeper into the single source of truth. In the original belongs to has many, it is still kind of fuzzy. I think conceptually um, there's an understanding, but once you have more models, once you get into the many to many, the single source of truth will make more sense. If it doesn't, I will try my best to uh, re-explain it. All right. And then this is just a follow-up to uh, the single source of truth. All right. So just many to many today. Anything? Cool. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Nice. So let's uh, review, right? Remember, we are in OO world now. We're no longer in string land. All right, so what that means is if, let's do this, right? If I had a classroom, all right, I would do this, all right? I would just make a new classroom and now have access to it through the classroom variable, all right? If I wanted to, um, I can find out the students, right? And this should return me like an array. Bloop, bloop. All right, so we have Ben, Matt, oops, uh, like Stacy, something like that. Stacy should be a string. Uh, cool. What the? F Does anyone know why that didn't? That was weird. Yeah. All right, I'm just getting the right back. And then if I wanted access to them, all right. If I were to do class, because I can do this, right? Because that's just an array. I can access like the first one. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And what's that going to return me? Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. All right, Ben. Whoops, Ben. But the problem we ran into in Stringland is that now Ben, the string, doesn't have any like attributes. Ben, the string, doesn't have any of the built-in methods in the student class. So what I'm looking for, actually, when I do this, is instead of this, oops, look up, look up, look up, look up, look up, all right, whoa, all right, is I want these like objects, right? So it's going to say something like this, like student, and then like a hash, and a bunch of like key numbers or whatever, and then and then like it's gonna list the attributes, right? Like at name equals to like Ben. Something like that. Right? So I want to get out of this, so I'm just gonna put comments in here, right? Bad. Right? This is string land. And then here is MoBeta. Right? So object land. Any questions on why I want to get into object land versus string land? So I want access to this and the built-in methods for the student class. Yeah? So this right here is a relationship, right? So there's like some student in here, right? So in the same vein, instead of this string, it'd be like student.new, and then it would be like Matt. Cool. All right. Boop, 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 boop. All right. In case there's any questions, all right. Uh, let me just clean this up. All right. We also went over what, like readers and writers. So what do we do? What's an adder reader? And it's just going to return attribute. Oh, this is so gross. This is so gross. Ugh. Cool. Mo better. Ugh. Don't do this at home, kids. Yeah? 
And then do I need to go over the writer and the accessor? Who wants me to go over writer and accessor? Very good. Nice. So if for whatever reason, like I ask you to build a deliverable for whatever reason, and it says, I want, I want to see a method that returns the attribute. And you have this adder reader called attribute. Do I need to write this method? OK. Just want just to make sure. Yeah? What if it was like a class variable? Will I have to write the getter? Can I just drop it here? Why? Because the class is the instance? I, I heard a lot of weird things. Yes, this uh, pretty um, syntactical sugar only works for instance variables, not class variables. So you will you will have to define those class getter and setter methods if you need to. Absolutely. So how do I define a method for a class? Right. So class variable, right here, right? Cool. And then this would be one or two, right? And it's just a class variable. That's the getter for it, right? Should look pretty familiar here. I can do this, a little bit of that action, a little bit of this. Should look familiar. Cool. Any questions on this? All right, so I talked about something yesterday in regards to like what domains are and what relationships are. And I said something abstract in the sense that we build these models in a domain to represent real world relationships, right? So that one to many, we had books and authors, right? And that was really about it. So we can just, let's just go over this. Boop, boop, boop. One to many, right? And the example was what? A book belongs to or has many? All oh, the author. So if it belongs to the author, within my book class, what must be at least initialized in there? Author. Right, one more time. If this belongs to the author, the book must be initialized with an author. An author. Right, the belongs to is like, should trigger you. But not in like the dangers, like, like oh snap, like nom was tough. But just more like, oh snap, I should be like thinking about something, right? Cool. And then, uh, to complete the entire relationship, what is the author? Does it belongs to or has many? Right? Books. I'm just going to do this for funsies. Uh, not yet. Not yet? Not yet. Has many book. Ah, I'm just going to put books. Forget it. Forget it. You know what I'm saying, right? Any questions on this? All right. Oh, yes. Sorry, book belongs to very generally speaking, the book needs to somehow require author or have access to all those methods because it um, Let me see if this works. Need to have access to books. <sighs> nice. So, generally speaking, um, sorry. If this class belongs to something else, it should probably keep track of that instance. Should keep track of the author. But will it require it? Require relative? Will the file require relative author? In a vacuum. In a vacuum? No. No. That's why we have that combo file that's going to require relative everything. It'll make more sense as I, as I keep going. Because um, I kind of think where you're, you're at. And if it doesn't, ask again. All right, is that fair? Cool. Any questions on this? All right. So remember, I'm just going to put little, little high-speed notes in here. How do I do this? Whatever, I'll, I'll do it later. Um, so belongs to, right, generally means should be um, initialized with right other model cool nice all right
So, we talked about like how the relationship reflects real world things. Finally, we will enter the, the next level of relationships, right? Many to many. The it's complicated. Mad complicated. Pineapples, exactly. Apples to apples, pineapples to oranges, exactly. So, in real life, what is a many-to-many -many relationship? It just means that something has many of something else, and that something else should have many of the original something. That wasn't like the sexiest, sexiest explanation but that is definitely like what it is. It will make more sense as you absorb more concrete examples. Does anyone want to attempt an example of a many-to-many? -many? I have a question about yesterday's like, um, pair program. Was that many-to-many? -many? Because of project and have many backers, and a backer would back up many projects. Yes. Okay. So, Right, let's do that. A project can have many backers. Right? And a backer can back it up. Many projects. Back, back, back it up. Right? Oh yeah, we all know that song. That's the one. I can't tell if you're laughing at how great that song is or how bad my rapping is. But we'll just leave that alone. Both, good. So, any other many to many's that we could think about? Dogs and fleas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> while that one is great, there are some complications to that, so I'm going to leave that one out, right? I like where your heads are at. So. <laughs> What about just like friendships? All right, I'll play. I'll play your game. Parents can have many, many children. All right, because they're that's what parents do, and children can have many parents. <laughs> yes, you're right. I just I just pick people random. I'm like Johnny, you want to be my dad? Yes. More parents. More parents. Um, while this is a good example of many to many, it also is sort of limiting, right? You can't really. There's a certain limit to like the amount of parents you can possibly have in the future. However, it is true in the sense that a child can have like. Parent one, parent two, I'm so generic. Parent three, parent four. Whether that's like in the grandparent side or like the step parent side, it's fine. You can have, in fact, many parents, right? Or if you're like Asian, then like everyone's somehow related to you. <laughs> so many is just like if we're saying many, that is just like two plus, right? You could stop it too, it could be an amount. It's um, the possibility that. It is two plus. It doesn't have to be necessarily two, right? You can have zero parents. It's I probably shouldn't use that one. Let me go with. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to edit recordings, but I'm going to find out. Uh, you can, in fact, be a backer, uh, have no money, and back zero projects. But the fact is, you can back many projects. It's more of like the potential, right? Versus um, in the narrow scope that we talked about yesterday, like if I pen a book, like that book somehow doesn't really belong to anybody else, right? In that narrow scope, right? And just in that narrow scope yesterday, just why I didn't love that example, but it's okay. Um, anything else? City bikes and riders. City bikes and riders. Uh, talk to me, Goose. So there's, like, I'm kind of picturing like a rack of bikes, but there's, uh, so there's like many bikes, and then there's many users for those bikes. Okay. Right. Rider has many, or can ride, rather. 
many city bikes. That's going to be annoying for some reason later. Oops. Bloop. Cool. Oops. Cool. 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 Yeah? Anything else? So you're saying ballers can play <laughs> mad games, right? And games can be played by mad ballers, right? Sorry. I meant many. I forgot I'm being recorded. That happens often. <laughs> right? This is actually a really good one. We should make a lab. We should make a lab. So, um, this is the one that I like to build, right? Squirrels. <laughs> Whoa! Squirrels can have many trees, right? And trees can have many squirrels. Right? Now, you guys keep saying this weird word, nest. Unbelievable. Uh, I want to kind of explain something to you in this way, and I want to solidify a very important concept. When a squirrel knows about a tree, it should only know about that tree if it has a nest in that tree. Did I say anything absolutely wild? So I'm going to go into like uh, squirrel biology. Squirrels make nests, yeah. right? This is the thing they do. And that's where they build their homes, right? And they build them in trees, right? So let's say you had a squirrel, squirrel one, and you had four trees. And this squirrel one wanted to build a nest in tree number two, right? Behind door number two. Does Squirrel one know about tree one, three, or four? Does it like have any interaction with it whatsoever? In this example, no. In this example, no, right? It probably passed by and was like, that tree sucks. It doesn't, know about, like, it doesn't have a relationship with those like, trees. You're tell me how to get to the fifth branch. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, <laughs> no, it's more about like uh, if I were to be like, hey, squirrel one, like. What trees do you know about? It would only know about the trees that it has nests in. All right, so the squirrel will only know about the tree through the nest. All right? Does that sentence make sense to you? Cool. So we're going to draw it out on this awesome web whiteboard, which I don't get paid to promote at all. So we have a squirrel, right? And we have a tree. Right? And we'll just, for funsies, let's just make this nest, table, model, whatever, right? So the s relationship between squirrel and tree, what is that relationship? Is it a belongs to or has many? Has many. Cool, 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 cool. What about tree to squirrel? A tree can belongs to a squirrel or has many squirrels? Has many squirrels. Interesting. So it looks like this is a many, right, M, to a many. That's what this relationship looks like. But, like I said earlier, the squirrel will only know about this tree through the nest. So let's talk about this relationship between squirrel and nest, right? A squirrel blank nest. Does it has many or belongs to nest? Does the squirrel have many nests, or does the squirrel belong to the nest? Squirrel has many nests, right? And each of those nests that that squirrel makes, does it belong to the squirrel, or has many squirrels? So it belongs to the squirrel. This looks like a one to many. What about this? What about this nest, right, and this tree? Can a tree belong to a nest, or does the tree have many nests? That's good English. Good job. And what about the nest? Does the nest, does that nest, that one particular nest, have many trees, or does it belong to the tree? 
So this looks like a one to many. Right? So whenever you have a many to many, whenever you have a many to many, you must have some sort of joining table. You must have a join table. Right? There is an additional model that comes up when you have a many to many. Must exist. A join table? Yes. I'm just saying that it will make more sense later. I'm just trying to slowly but subtly introduce new vocabulary to you that you just blew up the spot. But that's great. <laughs> yes, this is a new model that gets introduced when you have a many to many. Uh, I'm just going to call it a table for fun, but it will make more sense later. Right? When I talk about SQL and stuff, or SQL, if you're particularly particular. Right? So, let's think about another like domain model, right? Let's talk about uh, doctors, and let's talk about patients, right? You're a doctor, a medical doctor, right? I, I don't know any PhDs that see patients, but either way, you're a medical doctor, and you went to school for like nine years, and you are two hundred and ninety thousand dollars in debt. Nice. Do you want to see one patient or do you want to see many patients? One patient. Depends on the patient, right? Like if I'm like Kim Kardashian's doctor, I'm like, done. Just one, right? So do I want a doctor to patient relationship? What is that? Many. Boom. What about patient to doctor? Well, you can see more than one doctor? I've been doing this wrong my whole life. Like an ear doctor, nose, throat, one doctor, eye doctor. Oh, I got to make my gyno appointment. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yes, right? So this is a many to many. Let me ask you, how do patients and doctors know each other? Like when do they actually ever really meet? Huh? Who? They know each other through what is known as an appointment, right? So when's the last time you saw your doctor without an appointment? That's right. Yeah, but then you just made an appointment when you first signed in, right? So the doctor, appointment, patient. What is the relationship between doctor and appointment? Can a doctor have many appointments? Yep. And what about each of those appointments? It belongs to the doctor? What does that look like? <coughs> what about this appointment and this patient? Can a patient belong to an appointment or it has many appointments? Yeah. Cool. And that appointment belongs to patient, right? So this is many and this is one. This is the join table. This is the additional model whenever you have a many to many. Right? Notice how this is called appointment and that is called nest. Right? Sometimes your join table, your additional model, will have a name that just makes sense. Right? You're just like, oh, okay, this is what combines them. This is how they know each other. The doctor will only know the patient through the appointment. Right? If I say, hey, doctor, do you know Evans Wang? Yes, I saw him last year for his annual gynecology appointment. Right? That's the only way they know me. I don't like take my doctor out to dinner. I don't play softball with him or her. Or it. It's 2018. I don't know. Right? Like I just, I only know them through the appointment. Right? Cool. Any questions on many to many? that really breaks down into two separate one-to-many's and how that works out. Again, if I say many-to-many, -many, your immediate thought should be where's join table. Huh? Where's the one-to-many? Yeah, where's the join table, right? If there's a many-to-many -many relationship, where's the join table? What's the join table? What combines them? So in the case yesterday with the, the Kickstarter where you have back some projects, 
The join table did not exist yet because you were storing them in arrays in strings, right? Because you're still in string land. That is designed to kind of ramp you into this, to kind of give you an idea like there is a better way to do this and I haven't figured it out yet because you haven't been introduced to the concept of many to many. Does that make sense? So that was like a many to many example. That was a many to many in string land and how painful was it? Pretty painful. Mad painful. Many painful. Yeah. <laughs> So, moving on, right? If I have a one-to-many, and this is getting out of control, I'm sorry. This is the many, right? And this belongs to the doctor. What must the appointment have in there? If it belongs to a different model, it needs the doctor in here, right? That should be a D. But it'll also work for P. Because if the appointment belongs to the patient, what must also be in here? So this is going to be a good D, actually. Yeah? Let's, uh, let's go back to this bad boy over here. Ah, dang it. I don't know how to do this very well. I don't have the hand. But we'll try it. So the nest belongs to? So what must be in this nest? And tree? Maybe? Outside of the nest. Yeah? Does that make sense? So if I initialize a new nest, what two things must be in there? Score on the tree. Yeah? Now, in the reverse logic, if I'm just looking at this nest, and I know my three models of squirrel, nest, and tree, and I, all I see is a defined initialize, and I see that it takes a squirrel object and a tree object, what can I infer? That it's combining, and it's the join table between... A squirrel and tree. Oh, thank you. Yo, do you mind just grabbing the charger? Thank you. No, that's for a um, MacBook Air, and this trillion dollar company likes to make additional accessories for everything they make, specifically for different models for anything. Yep. Love Apple. Love them so much. Bothers me the most is that the adapter doesn't go into the, uh, into the head. Oh, sorry. It doesn't work for the laptop. And then you can't connect your new iPhone to your new computer. Basically. Yeah, so many to many. <laughs> but you're right, that's frustrating. Right? Many to many. Right? Uh, does anyone have any questions on that relationship? How to establish it? And why I need an additional model? Um, maybe this is getting ahead. Like, is that. Is that joint table going to be a hash? Is it going to be a class? That's a very good question. Let's find out. I feel like I'm on Blue's Clues, right? <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Right. Now let's do it. Um, I think I'm, there's nothing in here except this readme. So let's make some stuff, right? Cool. What do we want to make? What are my models? Oh, yeah. We're going squirrel? Yes. What else are we doing? Tree, right? And what else should we probably make? Right? Because remember, we need all the models, right? And when I said models, I'm thinking class, right? With a K. Just kidding. It's with a C. Right? I'm thinking class. So if I have a class, I should probably make its own file. Yeah. Right? Cool. Let's do that. Do we, do we still need this? Do we need to reference this anymore? So if I say nest is the join table, you're going to be like, all right, cool. Do you need a seat anymore? No. No. Um, that being said, always draw your schema. Oh, I'm sorry. This is known as a oh, oh, this is known as like a schema. If I ever say the word schema, or Mike, or Brooke, or Matt, schema is a visual representation of your data, right? Remember, class is just storing data. So this is a visual representation of my classes, which are models. So this is a schema. So when we say draw your schema, this is what we mean, right? Draw the relationships. Because if you can fathom it, there's going to be a point where there will be more than three models. Right? And then it's going to be really hard to say, hey, this squirrel also is related to something else that I can't think of on the spot right now. And that maybe this tree is also related 
to, uh, I don't know, forest or something. And then all of a sudden, it's really hard to see, hey, what's the relationship between forest and nest? It's going to be hard, right? So schema, that's what that means. Any questions on schema, the word, what it looks like, and what that means? Awesome. Cool beans. Let's do this. Oop. Um, yeah, this, this is good enough, all right? Yeah? Do you want to add anything to this? Like, just one little quick dot, like, squirrel has many nests, and then nest belongs to squirrel. Right? And then also same for tree. You get it, right? I'm not going to. Oh, cool. So this is the nest file. Bloop. Right? Think about it like this. The nest needs to know about what two objects? So without the squirrel and without the tree, can the nest ever possibly exist? No. Should I build this nest class first? Probably not. So should I start with squirrel or tree? Doesn't matter, dealer's choice, right? These are your many to many, right? So who wants to start with squirrel? That's good enough. Cool, let's do that. How do I start this class? Exactly. All right. Cool. And then what else do I need? You know it. And what are my arguments? I did that not work. Okay, I need what? Name I probably this squirrel probably has like a name, yeah. all right? And do I want to put tree in here? No. I don't. Why? Uh, yeah, do I want the tree in here? Yeah. All right. So let's just say we put tree in here, all right? Every time I update tree. I also have to update squirrel, which I'm duplicating code, right? This is where the concept of single source of truth really comes into play, right? I don't want to write anything about the tree in the squirrel class. I only want to write about the tree in the tree class. And then write about the squirrel in the tree class. No, I only want to reference the squirrel class in the tree class. That's exactly right. So I don't duplicate code. So I don't have to potentially get in the infinite loop when I want my backer to add a project into my backers array and then my project to add the backer in the backers array. So I have to do that dose times. Or for the Mandarin folks out there, er. It means two. Knowledge. Right? So, do we want the tree? Yes or no? no. Check or hold. Done. Is single source truth starting to make a little bit more sense? You don't have to be rock steady on it, but does it make a little bit more sense? Right? I'm not going to add tree stuff to my squirrel class. Yeah? Squirrel knows about squirrels. Trees know about trees. Nests know about nests. Class variables, class methods, classes. Instance variables, instances, instance methods. Yeah? Cool, 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 cool. Anything else? Okay, we can do that. An adder what now? Sure, and it's the name. Very good. So what should I do now that I wrote some code? Cool, cool. Um, let's do that. How would I do that? How would I test this thing? Well, first I need to pause the code somewhere, right? Cool. And then? S1 right here? Cool. Yeah? And now what? All right. And then now we have who? Ye your boy. All right. And then S1.name? Your boy. Nice. Nice. All right. That took how long to test? 
worth the investment. I promise you. Anything else we want to do for squirrel right now? Do I want to get all the squirrels? Probably at some point, maybe. I don't know. So let's do that. How would I do that? At, at all squirrels. Where is this? Where, where am I putting it? Under the add a reader. Cool. You said at at all squirrels. <laughs> and then what's that? It's an array. Okay. And then what am I doing now? Yeah. And then? Do I want to test it? Oops, I almost put .com. What am I doing? Now I should probably test, right? So how do I test? Exit. I have to exit, right? Because it has not taken my new code, right? Has not taken my new code. So I need to get out of this particular session, and I need to be in this session. Because if you look, I'm still stuck here. I'm paused where I haven't even shoveled at it all in. So it's not going to exist here. I have to bang out of this. That fi backfired. I have to bang out of this. And then I need to re-go into it to hit the binding so that I now have access to my new code that was just written. Right? Remember, when I exit out of this, it will continue to evaluate the rest of my code. So if I exit out of it and all of a sudden like you see the rest of your test pop up, that's because it's running the rest of your code. It just pauses it here. Does anyone have any questions on that? Cool. Let's do it. That was weird. OK. OK. OK, cool. So how do I test this? How do I call the class method? All OK. All dot class. OK, at at all dot class. I'm listening to you. What? Scroll like this? Why capital? So I must call the class method on the class object, right? Class methods on classes with class variables. Yeah? Cool beans. And there we go. Empty array. Why? Because Princess Acorn doesn't exist yet. Silly gooses. Okay, don't know how that got there. So this is how I'm going to test. I'm going to make one, and then I'm going to call all, and it should be there. Yep. Boop. Yes, yes, you. I'm sorry. Sorry, my staring. Naming it all is not necessarily convention. It just makes sense. So for example, like I could name this um, if I really wanted to. Um, uh, I don't know, Miriam, if I wanted to, right? And then what would happen is this. I would, for some reason, in my code that somebody else needs to read, by the way, squirrel, oh, that's not even right, dot Miriam. And that's going to give me all of the squirrel objects I've ever made. And you're just going to be like, hey, bro, your code works, but um, what is Miriam? And I'm like, dude, it's like an Egyptian word for all. I can't believe you don't know that. Um, so that's why. It's not necessarily a convention. You name your methods because that's what it's supposed to be doing. Right? Cool. Let's, let's D that bad boy. I mean, Z that bad boy. Dot all squirrel? if we wanted to name it all underscore squirrel. If I wanted to name it underscore squirrel, like all underscore underscore squirrel, I can, but then it would look just like this: squirrel dot all squirrel. Well, sense. Squirrel dot all squirrels. Yeah. Um, yes, but you can achieve the same effect with less characters. Less typing. Right. Sure. Right. Sorry, there's a fly here. If you didn't see it, I'm not crazy. Just a little bit, but not too much. Right. Any other questions on this? How we got here? And why a test?
What I've seen is as you get tired or you panic in like the assessment possibly, you will mistype, right? You see me do it all the time. I, I can't spell squirrel. I should probably not use this example anymore, <laughs> but it's rough. Um, and that's gonna happen, right? You're gonna put like this squirrel here, you're gonna put like MAME. You're not gonna catch it because N and M are so close, both on the keyboard and visually, and you're panicking, you're like, got it, got the reader, got the attributes, I'm ready to go, and then all of a sudden you try squirrel.name and it's not working, and you're like, why the face? And uh, yeah, what the fox say, right? And that's what's going on. So just be careful, right? Always test, right? Test after like points that make sense. Cool. So, squirrel looks pretty decent to me. Uh, what else should we do? Let's go into that tree class, right? So, so here's what I mean by pattern matching. So here, here you want to be careful. Yeah? So far, so good? I think I'm done. Just be careful, right? Because if I, like, kind of see it and you can't explain it, I'm like, where did this come from? So what I did was I just made this tree class. I also required pry. This tree has a name. And in order to get all of them, I'm creating a class variable because the class variable is accessed by the class. And it doesn't make sense to make all an instance variable. Meaning if I put tree.new and assign it to a variable called tree1, I'm so generic. Uh, why would tree1 know about all the other trees? Don't make no sense, right? So the tree class should know about all the trees. And so that's why we chose purposefully to make it a class variable. And that's really about it. So I should probably, I should probably test this, right? How would I test it? I'm going to run the tree file, right? Cool. I have tree class. I have tree.all. I can make a new tree with a name like maple story. All right, great game. And then t dot one dot some method should break. And then t and then tree dot all should give me all the trees. But that's just convention, right? Like you could define tree dot all to return you the class tree dot all. Can I define tree dot all to give me what? So There is nothing programmatically wrong with it. It just don't make no sense. Yeah. Right? So yeah, that's the beautiful thing about like programming languages um, and a concept called hacking. Right? But what we call it in like development world is called monkey patching. Meaning I can make it work, uh, but is it the best way though? First make it work, then make it pretty. And then like, you come to a certain point where you're like, oh god, I need to find all the trees, and then you're like, well, wait, tree dot all isn't working. Like, yeah. And then you would you, like, get back and like, oh, I played, I have to call it on the instance. Yep. Here. Exactly. Any questions so far? Cool. So now let's build this, uh, now let's build this join table, right? So first thing I want to do is require pry because I make boo-boos, like that one right there. All right? What's this class called? All right? Naming convention, just the file, and then uh, the name of the class. All right? Cool. 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 That, that hurts my eyes. Sorry. Uh, what am I trying to do now? Oh, that didn't work. Whoop. Whoop. Cool. And what does the nest need? Yeah, right? Let's put argument two. And what else? I just put, um, I'm just saving my time later. Um, so don't follow this for a second. Cool. So what does it need to know about? The nest needs to know about what two things? Right. Uh, if, if there is an exact spelling match, T 
to include case sensitivity, Command D will highlight the next one. And then Command D again will highlight the next one to include all of them. All right? So am I passing in what? When I make a new nest, right? Am I passing in right a squirrel like um, Princess Acorn? A chord, whatever, and a tree like oak, mighty oak, mighty, mighty oak tree, like this. Would this work though? I'm asking you. Would it work? We'll initialize like a champ. You know it because there's nothing wrong with the code, but is this what I'm trying to do with good object oriented programming? So if I'm trying to object-oriented programming, do I want this string or do I want like a tree and an actual squirrel object? I want those instances, right? So in the same way that I literally did something like string.new and I passed in like my girl princess acorn, right? I don't know, I can't spell. All right, that works, all right? What I want here instead is an actual squirrel object. All right, so you I should do something like this, right? And it takes a name, right? Like Alvin. The chipmunk, right? So I run into a dilemma here because does the squirrel class exist in this file? Can I make new squirrel? I need to require relative. I need the squirrel file and I need the tree file, right? So if you require relative, it's going to create. I can require relative in this file. I can do that. Like right here, straight up require relative, right? And then the file, right? This, this, is not, this is not gonna work. This is a joke. Sorry. <laughs> Fine, right? I'm in current directory squirrel. How's that? Dot RB, if you want to go mad hard. Thanks. Right? This works, yeah? Does it make sense that only in the nest class I'm requiring the other files? Yeah. Does it, though? No. Because the class file, the file, should only know about one thing, and that is the class. So, you want to throw these all together in another file. yeah, so I want some sort of C -c 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 combo, like a combo, combo number five, right? Like a combo file, right? What did we call this last time? Run, run, file. run file. So if you see run, right, will that make sense to you? Yeah. All right, if you see combo, will you associate that with the run file? Yes. Okay, cool. Let's make a combo <laughs> file because I'm, I'm boring. This is the combo file, in case you're wondering. And then you're going to require all yeah, um, and now I'm going to require relative. What? Hey, if you have a question, I don't mind answering it. Um, the only reason I prefer not to have them in the back is because I'm afraid you'll miss a step while you're answering that question, and you're being a good Samaritan. So, does everyone understand this? I really, I really don't have a problem. I just that's just like a, a warning. Warning sounds ominous. More like a. This is something you should note of. It's definitely not a threat. No, please help your friends. Just if it's like a, a question, um, it's likely that somebody else has it, and I and I can't read your minds. Believe it or not. Um, nor do I want to. So now we need to relative tree right? Right. You mean like this? Boop. If you want to know how to do that, it's Command Shift D, right? It's a faster copy paste. Any questions on this? Wait, Command Shift D from how does it? From my too. Yeah. So like, if I wanted to highlight this, I hold Command and I hold Shift and I press D, 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 and then I just Command Z it. Yeah. And then I press Delete. We need a whole. No look. Right. And then if I wanted to, because they're already in the same folder, I'm not going to tell it to look in the same folder. Ruby knows Ruby. So I'm going to, to clean that up. Awesome. 
So now that I have access to both those files, yeah. Eventually, would you need Nest in there as well? Would I need Nest in there as well? Yes. We just haven't created it yet, so. No, Nest exists. Nest was done. Did I, did I not do Nest? No, we made that. Oh, okay. In my head, I was like, did I just make that up? Um, sorry, I have a lot going on. So I, I genuinely might have missed it. Uh, yeah, no, so Nest exists. Uh, squirrel and tree, yeah? Sometimes you'll have extra attributes in your join table, in your extra model. Like if this was the appointment model, right? You'll have doctor, patient, and like what parameter probably makes sense? Duration. Like a time, right? Direction? Duration. Oh, duration, yeah. Ooh, I was like, I've never gotten like directions in appointment before. But either way, yeah, duration makes sense, right? So sometimes you'll have additional attributes here for this purpose. Um, forget. You want it? Do you guys want it? What, what, what's like an attribute of a nest? Material. That was scary fast. Uh, sure. Size. Yeah. We'll, just, we'll just stop at one. Because I could see that uh, this class was wildly well prepared for this. What about our macros? Aren't we going to want macros with nest class too? For like if it fits your macros? What? Like attributes. Like our, for <laughs> nest class, is there a reason that we didn't do the adder accessor for... There is no reason we didn't do an adder accessor, and had I tested, let me down, I would have caught that. Okay. So, now that you've mentioned it, good job, let's add that. What do I want? You know what? Let's just, let's just do them all. Let's just do them all. These squirrels are very aggressive, and they will steal each other's nests. Very aggressive. All right, so what do we have here? Squirrel. We have tre. And we have mats, right? Oop. Questions so far? OK, I'm not going to do it because I'm running short on time, but I'm going to drop a binding here. And then I would essentially test the ability to read and write all of these attributes. Yeah? Cool. Boop, 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 boop. All right. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah? So now we have this combo file, right? What is it that we were trying to do that made us want to create the combo file in the first place? We wanted to make a new nest, right? So let's do that. What's nest.new? And what does it need? Squirrels. It needs a squirrel and it needs a tree. Right? And now it needs some material, right? Like sometimes like for, sometimes when you're from the hood, I'll make them out of these, but don't worry. Right? <laughs> right? So uh so we probably need the squirrel to exist, right? Like some sort of squirrel object. How do we make a new squirrel? We're going to make it in this nest. We're going to make it in the nest right now. Live. All right. Or we can make it before. And then just or, yeah, let's do that, right? So what is it? Talk me through it, Goose. S1 equals squirrel.new and then like billing. IE or Y? Y. Wow, this is like my default name for like when I like say something really silly. You watch Billy Madison? I'm like, oh Billy, and I'll say dumb things like that. So cool. We're also going to want like a T1. What is T1? Who can tell me what T1 means? Three. All right, good. Because don't waste your time with like. Hold on. Well, what we basically did was we created these instances and then we created some test data. What I wanted you to think about over lunch, which I totally failed to do, was start thinking about what these deliverables are and how we can create these deliverables. Right? More specifically, where I would put them and how would I be able to get that information. So first problem we want to solve is let's create more seed data so that this is more robust and that we can uh, fully test all of our our queries in the future, right? So let's do that. Boom, boom. Two, three. We got any f fun names, or we'll just wanna we just wanna chipmunk them up. Send it. What is it? Huh? Avlin? Yeah, just like Smyan, right? Can you fix the 
You mean it is as a property of it because that's what it should be, but sure. Yeah? It should be with the com it should be with the apostrophe. Tree wants to know all of its. Tree wants to know all it is nests. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> that's why I'm a programmer, not an English teacher. Thank you, Johnny. Number one fan. Cool. All right. Oops, a little bit of this. Oops, oh, embarrassing. A little bit of that, a little bit of that. All right, a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this, a little bit of this. And we don't have Matt. Do we want them all the same or does it really matter? Same. Fine. A anyone have a preference? preference? <laughs> this was a classroom <laughs> suggestion. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to roll with it. Someone built a, an app on Mod 2 called Murder Face. So whatever you want to do. Oh, wait. Can you assign more than one? Great. The question was, can I assign more than one squirrel to that tree? And the answer is no, because that nest belongs to the squirrel. Could you do a, uh, this was like a, a random, like, squirrel to put into the city and they all if the nest doesn't really care how many squirrels are in, then the models and the domain need to reflect that, in which case it would be a many to many squirrels would have many nests and nests would have many squirrels, in which case we would have to change the whole thing. Right? But good question and that's and that's the answer to that. Awesome. Cool. So now I have this combo file, I have all this test data, right? And I have again just a quick review. My nest, just with the initialized method. Same with squirrel, same with tree. Now I want to build these methods out, right? So this is basically what it's going to look like in the assessment in the sense that it will say something like this. These are what are known as deliverables. So when I talked about the coding assessment and I say that, hey, I need you to build about 10 to 15 deliverables. This is what they're going to look like. You have to build them. Make sure you put them in the right class. Um, they're going to be ordered something like this. So where would I want to put these methods? What about these first three? Great. So let's do that. Boop, 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 boop. Spectacle removes some of the other shortcuts. All right. So here we go. Cool. Squirrel can make a new nest. How would we do that? Right. Cool. All right. And what does that look like? A squirrel is going to make a new nest. Squirrel is going to make a new nest. New dot nest. New dot nest. Very good. All right, cool. All right, squirrel wants to make a new nest, right? And how I'm following that is that the squirrel in the squirrel class, that squirrel instance, like squirrel one, is going to call the method make nest, right? And it's going to instantiate a new nest. And what are the parameters of the nest? We have a tree, all right? We have a tree, and we have a squirrel, and we have materials, right? I'm going to get to something real quick, all right? So we have something called tree, squirrel, and materials, all right? Where is tree, squirrel, and materials coming from in this method? It needs to be passed in this argument, right? So we need a tree argument. We need some sort of squirrel argument, and we need some sort of materials argument, right? Where is the tree coming from, right? Do I need a squirrel argument? Why? Cool. Any questions on this? Nice. So now, what do I want to do every time I write some code? Uh, is it about uh, the arguments that are passed in? Cool. I'm going to get to that later. So. All right. I drop the binding at the end because I want to make sure all my instances exist. All right. So I'm going to run it. Ruby. And how do I get to this combo file? Exactly. All right. <clears throat> oh. What's going on over here? What happened? I had a pry here. That's why I paused it here. So I'm going to get out. And I'm going to go back in. All right. 
So now I'm where I want to be. I've paused the code in the combo file, and I've required everything else. So do I have access to the scroll instances? Yes, right? And now I can, in fact, call an instance method on instance, right? And I need to pass it in, what was the thing? A tree? Let's make sure. Right? I need to pass in a tree object. What are my tree objects? Right? Maple and pine. So you want me to pass in maple like this? You want to stay in string land? No. No, cool. So I need the tree one. I need to pass in self. Do I need to pass in self? No, I don't, right? Because self is going to be automatically done within the method I just made. And what kind of material do you want it to be? Let's not make it needles, right? <laughs> cool. So now, interestingly enough, if I were to call, um, which one is this? This nest, right? Do I have access to that nest? Right? It's going to be the last. Oh. Did I not do that? Oh, we didn't. Y'all got me good. Y'all got me good. Cool, 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 cool. Let me just stop me if I'm going too fast, right? Cool. Exit. So, what's the difference between exit and exit with a bang? What is what does it mean? It's recursive. Yes. Exit with a bang means that no matter where you are, it will leave that pry session. Exit will leave that pry, continue running your code until it hits the next pry. You will find that in your iterations and in your loops, if you hit exit, it's just going to go to the next iteration because, believe it or not, it's actually going to hit the next binding in that same method in that next instance. Um, and that's what happens. So it's better to bang out of it. What's up? I was taught three bangs. That gets me out. Why does that? You were taught three bangs that gets you out? Gets me out front. Really? You mean like this? Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's a shorthand. Cool. Nice. So, huh? Yeah. So we usually when I say things like I'm a bang out of it, I personally write the three bangs. So I'm just gonna bang up bang out of it, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. It can be whatever you like. So let's do this, right? I'm going to make this nest again, right? I have access to it in my nest at all. Believe it or not, what winds up happening is it should wind up being the last nest in here because I just created it. It's going to come in that order. So that being said, nest.all.last should give me that instance of the nest. I'm going to have access to it. So now when I call squirrel, what am I going to get? I'm going to get the tree. And the reason I get the tree is because order matters, right? When I create the new nest here, I feed in tree, then I feed in self. So if we look at the nest class, right, I'm going to feed in the tree object. Here, it's going to take it right here. So at squirrel will be assigned tree. Order matters. It's important. Just be careful. Did that answer your question? Yep. All right, cool. Thought it would. Possibly. So. Any questions on this, on the order? Yeah. What? Not on the order, but on the order. Yeah. So, um, cause when, so when we're creating nest out here right here in the, um, in the method, I'm just curious about how we can, besides saying, you know, nest class, for instance, um, do we need to create a new variable saying, like, and a equals that afterwards? Is, no. Um, like after we, like if I do this. No, 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 not, not within the method, but after we run, um, run that specific method. Oh, you're like n8 goes. equals to um, scroll one dot make nest? Well, after we've created the nest. Because like, I'm just curious, like, how would we call it, let's say, in another method? Um, like, if we, after we create it, how do we? How do you get that specific one? Right, exactly. Very good question, right? When I did this, what did I get? 
I got that, right? If I wanted to, I get N8, and then, um, I don't know. Cool. Good? Answer? Nice. All right. Anyone have any questions on this? Nice. All right. Let's keep going. So I want to make a method, right, where the squirrel, unfortunately, is quite forgetful. They have been known to have poor memory. I don't actually know if that's true. This just, like, worked with my story. How many nests do I have? Right? I want to know how many nests do I have. Well, before I even get to this, let's ask, let's answer this, all right? The squirrel wants to know all my nests, all right? Bloop, 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 okay. And how do I get all of my nests? I'm just going to give you the method name. How do I get that? What am I trying to figure out? I could take the all class variable. Okay. Okay, iterate through. <laughs> Why select? Okay, I heard a lot there. Um, so unless someone slows me down, I'm not going to answer it. So select, right? What is each one of these? Cool. And now, what do I want to do with that nest? Equal to self. What's the difference between this and this? Cool. Don't make that mistake, right? And if you do, what's the only way to find out? OK, cool. We're not going to test for right now because you guys want to do labs. And that's cool. That's the right call. Right? So, how do I find out how many nests I have? Alrighty. What do I want to do? I, I heard it. I just I just know everyone else to hear it. I hear a lot of this length, which is like <laughs> weird. Um, I thought my English was bizarre, but yeah, length. No, missing a letter. All right, what else can we use? All right, they all work. They all do the same thing. I like length. I also like count. You'll see it in JavaScript. Yeah. And then what would I do before I get to your question? Thank you. I would test. What's your question? That's a very good question for Google. No, I'm sorry. That you're just talking about an array method, right? Uh, if you want to know everything an array method can do, it's best to look it up because you will get a better understanding of it um, and whether or not count will take parameters and how to uh, utilize those optional parameters if it does take it. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not exactly sure. I, I obviously know the logic of like the dot select iterate through, but um, the parameter of like, mess dot squirrel equals self, I'm not really following that so much. Where did you get that from? Cool. Do, do you guys want me to answer that or do you guys want to take that? So Go for it. Loud and proud so you can hear it. Good, good, uh, good explanation. I put putting enough. Cool. 
So, uh, how do I hit this binding? Yes. Yep. Run what? Fry? Um, I'm here, unfortunately. Right. What? Run uh, scroll.rb. OK. Is that going to work? I can run scroll.rb. It's OK. What do you need me zoom in on? <laughs> we are in scroll.rb. Don't 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 worry about it. This is this is something you need to understand. Okay. How would you hit it? I mean, I thought you were on the file. Cool. So, while what you're saying is true, I don't even have a binding in this file, so it'll never pause. So I can bring the binding back if you want me to. Do you yeah. think that that would help? Um, yeah, too. I'm in the binding. What do I do now? If you cannot see and you have vision that will impair your learning, it would be wise to sit closer. But I'll help you out, though. See what nest is equal to? Cool. Nothing. The binding is on 41. Now nah, it's cool, Daniel. It, it doesn't help if you feed it to him. That's okay. So, uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to explain it super fast. All right? Let me know if I lose you at any point. I hit the binding here. right? In order to hit the binding here, I'm going to have to call this method. This is an instance method. I must call it on instance. No instance exists here. I'll have to create a new one. Squirrel.new. S1 equals squirrel.new. Feed it the parameters. The instance is created. S1 is now the instance of squirrel. I'm going to call s1.myNest so that this method gets executed. I will now hit the binding at that point. However, nest does not exist as a constant, which is why I need to be in the combo file because I required relative all the other files so that the other classes exist. So I should always be operating in the combo file to test. Are you good so far? Great. So I want to hit this binding. In order to hit this binding, I need to call this file, the combo file. So let's do that. Right. I'm on 41 of the squirrel class. Why? Because I didn't save it. Right? Actually, I, I comped it out. I just didn't save it. All right? So, so here we go. I'm on 20. All right? That should match up. So I know exactly where I'm at. All right? I now have access to the instances I created earlier. All right? So S1 exists. Right? I need to call that instance method, make, I mean, my, sorry, my nests, right? In order to have that block of code execute. So in order for this block code to execute, again, I'm not going to run into the error of the nest not existing because while I pause the code here, all my files exist. The nest class, the tree class, and the squirrel class all exist. They did not exist in isolation in this one file in the squirrel class in the squirrel file by itself I had to create a new file so I can require all of them so they all exist so when I hit this right here nest is an initialized constant and it will not break yes or no yeah it's okay where did I lose you Okay, that's fine. Um, does anyone else 
need me to explain this or hit this, otherwise I'll just work on you one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, I'm still missing how you're hitting or cool. why you're not hitting line 24 on the scroll side. Absolutely. So, remember, this right here is defining the method. In the same way that if I got a brand new cute puppy and I wanted to name that puppy Cookies, I just named the puppy Cookies, right? Fun fact, it's my dog's name. Uh, if I never call Cookies, if I never say Cookies, just named him in my heart, will there be a response? I have to say Cookies for the dog to understand that I'm calling it. So Yep. Hit that binding, cry, hit that binding, cry on line 24, not number 21 in the runner. It will execute this method and hit the binding before it hits 21. Yes. Right? Very good. Cool. But because I'm at 21, I can just do it here. So basically, the answer is just that it's, it's, it's within the other method, so it needs to be called. This is just defined, it never executes. I must execute it for the code to be paused, right? You can't trip if you're not running or walking. Yeah? Cool. So if I do in fact do that, now I'm at the binding. So what is nest? Nest is the nest object, right? If I call nest.squirrel because it has a getter method for a squirrel, I'm going to get the squirrel object. This is an instance method. It gets called on by the instance, S1. So what is S1 again? Uh, I'm in the block. Scope. What a punk. S1 is the squirrel instance, right? We have Theo here. Right? In here, we have the nest. The nest was passed in the squirrel object, not a string. So when I call nest.squirrel, I'm getting this squirrel object named Theo. I'm checking to see if in that nest, the squirrel that owns that nest is equal to me. Can you call self here? Hmm? Can you call self here? Yeah, I can call self in the block. Yeah? So what this should return is true for this first one. And because I use select, it's going to push it to that new array that I'm going to return. Right? It's going to keep going. It's going to hit exit. Right? I'm going to hit exit, which is going to give me the next nest, which is now nest number two. This is also going to return true because it's the same one. And then I'll hit exit again. I'll go to the next one. Hit nest. This one is a a Avlin. Cool name. So it will return false. So, so far in the three iterations that I've done, only two return true. So currently, my new array in the middle of the select iteration will only return two objects. Can you reference the array that it's building from here? Not yet, no. It is not complete. A good question. All right, so I'm going to help you afterwards, all right? I'm going to help these folks get into their labs. Cool. Any other questions so far? Did that help anyone? Good answer. All right, cool. So now, we want to build the rest of these deliverables, right? Squirrel wants to know which trees I have nests in. So my trees. How do I get that? I mean, you passed already, so it's not fair. All right, so what I'm going to do is... Say again? We do we want to pretty much do a similar method on the array that comes out of my nests? Yes. So what I'm thinking out loud here is I want to know which trees I have nests in. In order for me to know which trees I have nests in, God, I wish I didn't delete that. Did I? Dang, I did. Sad. If you remember the join table, right, just follow along with me visually. You have squirrels. You have nests. Actually, I can do it this way. What is this? Nest? 
Ah! Nest. And I have tree. Alright. Cool. Squirrel, tree, and nest. Remember, nest is the join table, right? So I have squirrels here, I have nests here, and I have trees here. The squirrel only knows the tree through the nest. So, first thing I should be doing, right, is I should be going through all of my nests. All right? Going through all my nests, in each of those nest objects, there is both the squirrel and the tree. Right? The nice thing is, I've already identified all of my nests. So if I know I have an array of all of my nests, I don't have to worry about which squirrel that particular nest is in. I only have to check that tree. So if I check my nests, right, I'm going to probably select the trees that my nests are in. I'm going to do something cool. Right? And which, what are these objects in my nests? They're nest objects, right? Cool. Smort, smort. So in the nest, they have two things, right? What is it? Squirrel and tree. If I already know that I'm always the squirrel, what am I checking here? To see if the tree is what? I'm just looking for the tree. So is select the right iterator? What would it be? All right? Because now I'm mutating the data. I'm just going to return the tree. And allow me to introduce myself. My name is Humpty. Pronounce with the Humpty. Smart. Cool. So how do I get into that method? I'll have to actually call it. right? And that is in the squirrel class. So I need a squirrel instance to call this. So s1.mytrees. Boom. Hit that. What is nest? Cool. So what is the nest tree? Nice. It's a maple. Right? So if I hit exit, what is the nest? Another maple. That's original. Next. Nest. It's like there's no more. Cool. So I only have two. Right? Which should make sense since my seed data only has squirrel one twice. So if I take out the binding, I should see an array of my nests. Of my trees, rather. Right? Any questions so far? Cool. Let's have a question. Maybe it's a question. Basically, it's like, what we're trying to get at here is that even though there's this one to many this many to many relationship between the, the trees and the squirrels, that, that relationship is almost, um, doesn't, the, the practical relationship is the relationship between the squirrel, the tree, Jeff, and the nest. And there, this, 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 this many to many relationship doesn't really exist except through this other one to many relationship that you can have. I don't know how to respond to that because that wasn't really a question. I was saying that's what it is, right? That's cool. Why we're yeah. It. Yeah. I have a quick question. So if you go back to your pride thing that we just did, um, it shows that um, an array of the tree, the same tree twice, would be not a, like, okay, what? It's because I have bad seed data. Right. But what if I wanted to know now, right? Because I know that how did book get in here? What if I wanted to know, right? My trees, but I wanted it to be unique. I don't want any repeat offenders. Like here, this looks like the same tree because it it physically is the exact same tree. Because one, my my seed data is bad. But two, this is just a good thing to understand. What would I do, Mark? nest.tree.unique where would I call nest and where would I put tree and where would I put unique Miriam yes so this right here is going to return an array right 
it's going to return an array of two objects, and they're going to be, unfortunately, non-unique. All right? Remember, this is an array. I can, in fact, do this. And then at the end, I can put array, and I can call uniqueify it. But to the point that someone else made, can I chain, can I chain methods? Yes. Because remember, this evaluates to an array. And then I'm just calling dot unique on it. Nothing wild, nothing crazy. Try not to get into the habit of chaining methods, because it becomes very hard to debug. And it becomes very difficult to read sometimes. What you will see is this, and I'm sorry I'm slowing you down, but it's important for me to explain. Instead of the do end, right? Let's get rid of the unique. Instead of the do end, who has seen this? And then you do this bad boy right here. While I think that some people absolutely love this, it makes it very difficult to debug. Because where would I drop the binding? Can I binding x? Maybe. I will tell you. Um, we'll Google it. It will be very difficult. And the juice is not worth the squeeze. Yeah. So. Here, it's very clear. I could drop the binding before or after, and I could test the data at will. All right, here, where am I putting? Am I putting binding here? How will this evaluate? Who's sure they know how this evaluates? Exactly. Huh? Are you sure? Answer if you're 100% sure. Cool. Yeah. So while you're testing, do this. If you feel great about it, refactor it into this later. After you test it and it works, refactor it if you want to. And then test it to see if it works to make sure your refactor didn't break it. But how are you going to do that? You're going to have to call the method again. Is that worth your time? Probably not. Is this more or less readable than this? Not really. Why are you doing it? Because you think it's cool. Uh -huh. You're absolutely right. Seeing this do an end is significantly more difficult than seeing this and then doing a block of code here. It's more difficult to. I'm sorry. Right. So do end. Right? will give you a more readable error message than this. I guarantee it. That's an Evans Wayne guarantee. Uh, I'm not saying not to. All I'm saying is if I had the choice, there is a preference. They both execute, they both work, and they're both great Ruby. Awesome. Any other, other questions on this, Daniel? All right. So, to recap, to try to have I will go as fast uh, as you want. Squirrel. Join model. Joining model. Okay. Uh, Just get you the same table though. They're classes, right? Classes. Um, okay. But what word did I use when I associate with class? Mom. Yep. Okay. So we got so this structure. What would you call it? I, know you can I would say that this is the domain. Three different classes with one join table. You mean so all class, three? Huh? So like, yeah, like we haven't gotten there yet, but we have. Okay, if we haven't gotten there, let's let's not slow the lecture down. Would be is if I'm setting it up the way you just showed, right? Sure. And I get to name it whatever I want. Say it's city, house, individual, person. Okay. Cool. All right, you can have many houses in, in one city. Yeah. Okay. So like, person, human would be squirrel. Yeah. Okay. And uh, tree would be house, and then the city would be the nest. Right? How would you know if you were setting up that structure? How would you know what what would be the joining model 
Absolutely. My, I know exactly where you're going. What is the relationship between house and city? What is the relationship between house and city? You can have uh, many houses okay. in the city. Okay. You can have many, many cabinets in the house. Yeah, very good. So it's many to, it's two. Not everything will be many to many. You can have a one to many, that's a one to many. Okay. Yeah? All right, cool. So this will give me a unique array of my trees. But in that case, because the object ID is different, right? You'll still get the duplicate array. The object ID is the same. Is that what I'm saying? They're the same. Because remember, my bad seed data, right? Yeah. Scroll one and scroll one made tree into made a nest in tree one and tree one again yeah. with <laughs> needles. This is a t this is a rough neighborhood. This is not a smart squirrel, though. So one thing is that uh, if you look at the tree, the object, right, then, then they're exactly the same. Oh, they're the same. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Maybe I planned that. So, cool. Everyone, go with those deliverables. If not, um, speak now for a whole piece. You know what I'm saying? All right, cool. So now for these deliverables. Where would I put them? Squirrel, nest, or tree class? <coughs> awesome use of the single source of truth. All right? Because they look like tree methods. Look, they look like tree methods, right? A tree wants to know this. A tree wants to know this. All right? So what am I doing? If you type def and then tab, it'll finish the end and then it'll highlight the method name for you so you can write it at will. Now you love those shortcuts. Here, one more time. Ready? Def, tab. One more time. Def, tab. Where? One more time. No, no, say, say, say one more time. <coughs> what you just did, what you're doing. Yeah, just what you I'm going to name this method now. Yes. Uh, if I here. type in def and then without doing anything else, without adding the space, I hit tab. All right. Wants to know all of its nests. How do I do that? Cool. Right. What do I need to do figure out? Remember, the nest knows about the tree and the squirrel. Right. So my logic here would be that if I want to go through all my nests and the nest knows about the tree and the squirrel, at some point it's probably going to know about me. I need to check all the nests. If I want to know just my nests, I got to check all the nests. In the same way, if I want to check all the cards that are spade, I'm going to have to go through every single card to check the suit to see if it's spade. All right? So I would go through nest.all. What's your question? Cool. Appreciate it. When, when, when it's time to go fast, um, if you're just trying to participate, I'm going to fly. If you have questions, that's when I'll slow down. Is that like a little bit more, more better? All right. So nest at all, right? And what am I trying to do? Map, find, each, select, do, right? And what are these objects? Right. And I want to check in each of these nests, right? What attribute am I looking for? Tree. And what am I comparing that to? Cool. Cool. And then what should I do right now? Yes, test, right? I'm not going to because you want to do labs. So, cool. So, I want to know all of my squirrels. How would I do that, right? My squirrels. Would I just do something like squirrel.all? Why? Because, right, because there's no way for me within this squirrel object to check the tree. There's no attribute of tree in the squirrel. I will never be able to actually check. Single source of truth, right? I'm not putting any data inside the squirrel. 
about the tree or the nest. Squirrels know about squirrels, trees know about trees, nests know about nests. Yeah? So I must go through then what? All the nests. But more specifically, yeah. Yeah? And what are these? Nest objects? I'm checking to see if the what? The nest dot what? Is equal to? I'm just looking for the squirrel, right? There we go. Now you're getting it. All right. And then what would I do? I would test. Right? So, for funsies. Boom, boom. So, what kind of method is this? What? Cool. And what instance should call it? The squirrel, the nest, or the tree instance? Why? Because I defined it in the tree class. Right? So, tree one. Tree one dot my squirrels. It gives me all squirrels in my tree. And there you go. Does anyone have any questions on doing a many many relationship? Right? Grouping data related to classes, instance variables, class variables, and single source of truth. Great. That's all I have for you today. Thank you.